Captain Matt's Slipknot Rig, Carolina, Texas, in a tenth of a second. All right, if you're a commercial guide, I'm speaking to you today. Uh, I had uh, probably the shortest guiding career of anyone you know. I see that on the 15th day of August, 1991, I was given my commission um, as a uh, master near coastal steam motor vessels. And by March 3rd, 1993, I was effectively done. Uh, two things hit me simultaneously. One, the doctor said, hey, what's that on your arm here? And uh, the other was on March the 3rd at 5 a.m., the storm of the century hit Hernando Beach and put four feet of water into the house. And what wasn't outright destroyed, uh, I either had to throw away or, you know, I had to sell a boat to rebuild the house. And uh, for all practical purposes, I was done almost before I began. But in I did come up with three good things in my career, uh, one before my career. And what I'm going to teach you today to use is a slip rig that uh, will combine all of the elements of your fish finder rig, your plastics rigs, um, Texas and Carolina rig all in one and it helped me tremendously out on the flats and uh, I am sure it will you too and you can teach it to your customers. The other thing was the fish attractor which uh, I see that's already being marketed. I put that on YouTube and uh, uh, it's it's being marketed today. That's just a portable fish attractor that I came up out with, and, and that was during my guiding days because all my money was going out, you know, paying for bait. That uh, was a handy-dandy gizmo at the time, and the third thing is what I'm going to show you today, and that is a slip rig, which allows you to go, if you're using a hook, from a fish finder rig, any any weight up here, or if you're using plastics, you can uh, go from a Texas rig to a Carolina rig in a tenth of a second. Uh, you can, if you'll use double your bearing strength on the hooks, um, you can use the same hook and simply snap off a new plastic at at will, and not have to change your rig. This was tr a tremendous help to me as a guide because, you know, you're going along. Uh, in my area, we had a lot of bomb holes, so I could be bouncing one of these off, off the bottom in a fish finder or Carol Carolina-type situation. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, boom, there's a big hole, and I need to cast down for a uh, grouper. Well, I can just slide the weight, and I got my uh, bottom rig from a plastics rig all in one. Okay, I have no I I have no doubt at all these are actually from uh, my guiding in the salt water. I have no doubt that after this video is released within a matter of days there will be somebody with patches on who will appear with a kit that you must buy their kit to do exactly what I'm going to teach you to do as a guide today all we're going to learn is the weights to use the beads to use and uh, the knots to use and you'll be able to tie your own rigs with no problem at all uh, any of you fishermen that are doing this you'll be able to do the same you'll understand uh, art beads and fishing beads okay and some of your best beads are actually will come from the art world and they are sold by the pound when you buy them they come like that so no need to buy anybody's kit where they sell you just a few of these things for a whole lot of money let's get to it all right our first step is to 
select a worm. I've selected the granddaddy of them all, a man's jelly worm. I have hooked it and made it weedless by snapping the plastic back just like you're supposed to do. Okay, now we select a weight. All right, we're gonna choose a weight and I'm gonna go with a lightweight here at first. 90% uh, of our fishing is on the shelf out here and all we need is a little lightweight to uh, to do our setups with. All right, got some line. I'm gonna thread a sinker on first. Learned something about Captain Matson already. He's half blind. Now, I want to use the smallest bead that I can that will readily drop right down the line for whatever line I'm using. If I'm using 50 pound test I'm going to be up here in my salt water beads but I still want the smallest line smallest bead that'll drop up and down the line. Now in fishing beads are sized from the outside and art beads are sized from the inside. You will get the line diameter that you have from the real body, it's right on there, or from the uh, line manufacturer itself. Diameter 0.011. With that you could readily go into any Michaels, Joann's, uh, you could order from Fire Mountain Gems. You can order these by the pound, they cost virtually nothing and uh, you want to make sure that it's a plastic bead not a glass bead because a glass bead especially if you're using a heavy weight will shatter on you and there goes your fish if you've got a fish on now as i said fishing beads are sized generally from the outside you very rarely will find uh, these fishing beads with any information about the inside of diameter of the hull. In a way that doesn't matter. Um, a surprising thing that you'll find is that a big bead like this can have the same hole diameter as a small bead like that. All right, just to illustrate that these beads are the same, this is a heavy weight like you'd be using in salt water or Carolina rig in fresh water, whatever you, you prefer uh, for a fish finder. And you see how the beads, they all slip right up and down the line. This is 50 pound test. And uh, they all have the same hole right down to that little bead right there. Bing. No problem. This is the rig you're going to want to, the configuration you're going to want to have if you're using big heavy sinkers. You know, if you're out there using a a uh, car engine or something like that is your weight. You're going to want a big bead below your sinker, a smaller bead, and then we're going to tie our knot. So we got the smallest bead that we can. It fits right under there. A fish will never see that. And in this case, I'm just going to take a crappy, crappy, they call them speckled perch, we call them in Florida, um, slip knot. When I was in salt water, I, I, you could take two of these for the, the weights that I was using, this up to three ounce, and, um, and it'll hold. Okay, one jams the other. 
Let's get this on the line so you know what I'm talking about. You didn't see me wet it. That's kind of... Just thread that right in through there. These are really easy to tie yourself if you want to do that. And they come in packs of 25 for $5 or, uh, you know, oddly 50 for 8 Now save, save your little tubes if you're buying these to tie your own deal. All right, we're going to take, just pull it tight. And you really want to pull this. If you, the only way to do this wrong is if this knot is easy to go up the line. If it's easy to go up, you need to pull it tighter because it, you're going to be casting all day. You don't need to change your lures. You, well, you change your lures, but you don't need to change your hook with one of these. I had a very short guiding career, and this, this came out of uh, not inspiration, but desperation, because I was out there in the three years I was there, and, uh, you know, having to go from a fish finder rig to a Texas rig, immediately and uh that's where that's where i got the idea to make a adjustable rig sliding rig all right we're going to cut this off and you want to save these as well because that's all you need to do to tie your uh You got, you got two other ties here that you can do yourself. Okay, got that. Now, that's going to go like that. I'm going to clean this up with my knife. But now I can slide this sinker right on down to my worm. I can have a Texas, I can have a Texas rig slide it, slide the knot back up. Now I've got a Carolina rig. I can put this three feet, I can put this anywhere I want. Okay, and that's the idea. All right, let's tie our knot. Now I've got two soda straws and I've just took a little sticky stuff and stuck them together. This gives me a trough right here that I can run one end of this up. We want to make almost uh, a hook looking thing and we're going to wrap five wraps around this so let's just lay this right down this cord right down on the soda straws and I'm going to wrap one two three four five now you want at least five. You can do more. Don't do any less. With this end, we're going to leave this end alone. We're going to take this end and go right down that trough. Just like that. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to take the other end if I can get it out. Pull these tight, just like that. We're going to take, now remember, I, I, I'm doing this this way so you can see your next wrap would go here, your next wrap would go here, your next wrap would go here, and then you would cut them off into individual ties. I'm not going to do that for you, just showing you how to save some money. Because when you're a guide, you want to 
You're up late at night doing this stuff. Now we're going to slip one straw out. We're going to tighten this up. And we'll take our line, run this down here, pull that out onto it, tighten this down, and now we've got our slip rig done. So, hey, it's been great teaching you this. I, I, you know, I hope you teach your clients get really good where you can, you can do this. You've got a rig here that you can use in all different kinds of ways, and it should revolutionize your fishing. It did for me, um, you know, because uh, you're out in the boat, you don't have any need for terminal tackle and all that stuff that scares fish away. It was just a great rig to have in the arsenal, and now you've got it.